Business news from the Capital Region. This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. Thanks for joining us for a fresh look at business and finance and how it affects you. Coming up on today's show, demotivators. The people or things that suck the life out of productive workplace. We find out how to rise above. And in our roundtable this week, a top economist and the Washington Post top business and tech guy are here to tackle some of the big business headlines that could affect your bottom line. But first this week, when you have a winning formula in business, most experts say just keep doing what you're already doing. But in today's one on one, we talked to one of the restaurant world's most successful CEOs who took the opposite approach. Washington based Richard Sandoval now stands at the top of the restaurant world, but after his very first restaurant got rave reviews, instead of opening another one just like it, he deliberately tried something different new foods, new cuisines, and a fresh atmosphere. Now that the 40 something chef has opened 40 restaurants in 25 years, I wanted to know the secret ingredients in his recipe for success. Chef Richard Sandoval, welcome to Washington Business Report. I hesitate what to call you because you're a chef, but you have now become an empire. We're sitting here at Mango Tree at City Center, but tick off for our audience just how large your presence is here in the Washington area and now nationwide. You know, I mean, you know, here in Washington, we have about seven restaurants. Um, you know, I came to D.C., you know, Herb Miller, the developer of Gallery Place, brought me here, you know, 10 years ago and, um, you know, just kind of built one after another. And, you know, today's probably the city that have the most restaurants in is D.C. You know, around the country and around the world, we have a total of about 40 restaurants. We're in 12 countries. We're in Dubai, Qatar, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Mexico, and, and, and mostly in the U.S. And your father was a restaurateur. Right. So do you think you got your business sense from him, or was it from the banker grandfather, or where did you get that? No, it was absolutely my father. You know, he always, you know, he wasn't a chef. He was a restaurateur, and his partner was a chef. So he was always a very disciplined businessman. And so, you know, when I was working with him, you know, he always taught me, you know, how important it was to have a profit and loss, a balance sheet. And I think in today's world, I mean, a lot of restaurateurs and chefs fail because they don't understand the business side. I mean, you can have a fully packed restaurant and be losing money and not know it if you don't understand your numbers. And also to make, you know, decisions, you know, you got to be able to have information. If you don't have information, you cannot make decisions. So I was very fortunate in that sense that my, my father instilled that you know, business side into, into me, and that's what's made me successful, I think. So what was your first big breakthrough uh, in terms of landing a job that helped you make your name as a chef? Well, you know, after working for my father for two years, I decided to move back to New York. You know, I went to school in New York, so on the weekends I'd work in the city, and a friend of mine was working there, and, and I said, you know, I, I want to leave Mexico. I want to start my own thing. And so I, I moved to New York City, and I opened my first restaurant there about 21 years ago. But I think my first real break came when I opened Maya New York. You know, it was a first two-star Mexican restaurant in New York City. Um, you know, and after Ruth Reichel gave us that wonderful review, I mean, business just skyrocketed. Then the New York Times uh, restaurant critic, and she was very stingy with her stars. She was very, very tough, so, you know. I, you I know. wouldn't say Cindy, right? She was discerning. <laughs> discerning, yeah, she's, she's a great critic. What set you apart? What, uh, you know, there are probably more Mexican restaurants in the U.S. than anything else. Why did you decide uh, to make yours different and stand apart? Because you decided to go more upscale. Well, you know, I think what was happening, you know, at that, at that time with Mexican food, you know, I think people were seeing it as more Tex-Mex. There was no differentiation, and I think, you know, all, all the great, you know, cuisines, French, Italian, evolved, you know, for the last, you know, 20, 30 years. It went from pizzas and pastas, what everybody thought was Italian food, to the fine, you know, dining Italian restaurants. You know, French evolved, you know, you know, Nouvelle Cuisine, to modern, to what, you know, what was more global today. But Mexican kind of stayed very stagnant. So when I went to New York, you know, I said, you know, I went to the top Mexican restaurant. I was, well, this is not what I really, you know, grew up eating in Mexico. You know, so I think for me, it was also very important to showcase my culture not just the food. So I, I built this restaurant that was, you know, I, hi I hired a friend of mine that had a beautiful hacienda in Mexico. I said, you know, can you put your house in Manhattan? So he, you know, took his house, his art, and, and you know, that was my, my first break. But to be the first is always a risk. Did right. it make you nervous that, you know what, if it's not already here, maybe it's not meant to be? Or how did you overcome are you a natural born risk taker? What made you decide to do yeah, that? I, mean, I, th I think I'm an uh, adrenaline you know, junkie. You know, I, I love the adrenaline rush. I, I'm definitely a risk taker. You know, I, I love to you know, take chances. 
but, but how do you say measure chances? You know, I, I, I do my research and try to understand what you know what I'm going to do. But with Maya, the hard thing was, you know, the first reviews that I got, you know, were, were not very good because people did not understand. You know, people were saying, you know, well, why 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 should we go to Maya and spend fifty dollars when we can go to Margaritaville and spend twelve? And where are the nachos? Exactly. So, so it was very, very challenging. But you know, finally, I found you know a formula and kind of explain, explain it to the press and saying, well, you know, you compare apples to apples. You know, compare me to a great Italian, to a great French. I'm using the same proteins. You know, the same chili and sea bass, the same rack of lamb. But instead of you know creme fraiche, I use crema fresca. Instead of troubles, I use with la coche. Instead of thyme, I use cilantro. So I think once I started visualizing that, they, they understood. You know, and we're comparing apples to apples, and that's when you know I got the two stars and kind of you know everything thing took off from them. So the other thing that people uh, are always perplexed by your success is you build a really successful restaurant and instead of replicating it all over the country and having one in Vegas and blah 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 blah, you do that some, but you also keep trying new cuisines, new destinations. Why not just replicate success? Why take a chance on a whole new type of food? This is a Thai restaurant. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think as a chef, you know, you, you want to continuously learn, you know, and learn about different cuisines, different cultures. You know, if, if I would have done the cookie cutter, you know, concept, I probably would have, you know, done much better. You know, maybe I would have had 30 miles by now. Maybe I would have sold the kind. You, you never know. But I'm, I'm just not that kind of a guy. I mean, I like to, like you said, take chances. I like to... You'd rather cook than have a private airplane. Exactly. Really? Yeah, no, absolutely. One other thing that's been kind of a guarantee in business these days is to make the most of TV opportunities and to uh, be on every chef reality show. Why do you not do more of it if it could raise your profile? You know, I think different than a lot of chefs, I own my company too, so I run the day-to-day. -day. So it's not, I'm, I'm not just the front of it. You know, I, you know, a lot of chefs are the front of the company, but they have a, you know, a partner behind them that's the finance and it's kind of running the day-to-day. -day. I, I run the day-to-day -day of this company. I'm involved in every, from this, every space that we take, from every hotel deal that we take. So, you know, I'm, I'm very limited, you know, time-wise. Aren't you exhausted? You know, I actually am. You, know, you must be. Yeah, last year I flew 250,000 miles. Um, and I am getting tired. So are you going to try and take a little time to enjoy it all right now or are you already on to the next project? You know, you know, this year I'm opening another, I think, six restaurants. So you know, every year I say I'm going to slow down and for some reason, that, you know, so something happens <laughs> or they make me an offer I can't refuse and, you know, and I continue to go. But I, I, I really am at a point where I really need to slow down. I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, 25 years. You know, 40 restaurants in 25 years is tremendous. I mean, it's a huge amount of, of, of restaurants and, you know, what I like to say is you know, I'm 47 years old, but in restaurant years, I'm, I'm about 80. <laughs> Chef Richard Sandoval, thanks for joining us on Washington Business Report. Thank you. And he has headed up several big name restaurants here in Washington, D.C. Now he's heading up Mango Tree as a joint venture. We'll see how that goes as well.